I do two when I do it. Okay. Will, we are live. And we're live, Will. Yo, what's up, everybody? How y'all doing? Good. Yeah. What's Good. up? Thank you. Let's get right into it. Chloe guy leave. We got Chloe Hillard. Chloe Hillard has a book out, right? That's right. Called here it is right there. It's called um F your diet. All right. Well, I'm gonna say fuck your diet. That's right. Oh no, no, no. Fuck your diet. Fuck your diet. No, 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 Chloe. Fuck your diet. No, I'm oh, I've oh I, and being in the house, I've definitely fucked my diet. <laughs> and we got Daniel Simonson all the way from Norway. Oh yes. Daniel, what's up, man? Daniel's just by the way, Daniel, if you guys do not know him, he has a lot of energy. He's very wild and loud and energetic. Daniel, how you doing? Um, I'm pretty good. I like to start slow and build up towards what you say. So, and that is the most yeah. build up you will see. So, what y'all been up to? Who else is supposed to be here? A um, cypher, I think. Cypher, but we've surmised that Cypher might be at the Michael Che pop up show in Long Island City where there is alleged to be a big drop in. Oh, which the drop in? We we don't want to we don't want to speculate, but you know you know you know you know who you have one of his jackets. His jacket, me? Yeah, you you well, have. Well, look, I was just there. You okay. always have somebody's name on your clothes. <laughs> I know. I always have <laughs> my name. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just there, and I I left uh, to come to be with you guys. Did you see Cipher there? Yeah, I saw Cypher. Me and Cypher was co-hosting it for a little bit. And Wait, so why the fuck did you ask us where Cypher is? Like, you didn't just leave him. Everybody calm down. Everybody calm down. You were scaring Daniel Simonson, Chloe. <laughs> yeah. And you know, Daniel, Daniel has been around me. He knows how I get down. Every time I hang out with Daniel, I'm ready to fight somebody on his behalf. <laughs> is that yeah. true, Daniel? She got my back when I'm scared. She steps in. Who are you scared of? Um, like, uh, you know, the audience or waitresses, yeah. hostesses, security guard. Because we we've done the cellar at Vegas together twice, right? Twice. Um. Yeah. Twice. twice. Yeah, yeah. Twice. Yeah. And uh, and there's always a moment where he was like, that lady at the buffet was mean to me, and I'm like, where's she at? Oh yeah, she did bully me actually. Uh, one night. I wish in hindsight I stood more up for myself, but uh. Well, Listen, I'm oh, here to help you. Easy to look back, you know. Yo, so look, I know Chloe got to go, but I want to get into it. Chloe, how's your book doing? Um, I don't know. It's doing okay, I guess. Um, I definitely lost a lot of momentum in my marketing and my promo tour because of COVID. I was on but the I road. Feel like, I feel like the, the COVID should have, because that's when people are home. That's when people want something to do. This when you should have been pumping it out during COVID because a lot of sales went up, book sales went up, uh, Netflix obviously went up. Like people been having, they have, it, this is the time people have more free time on their hands. Yeah, well, that is true. And it was doing well. And I was actually doing a lot of like Zoom conferences like this, like at home um, talks with like different book groups and stuff like that. So that actually worked out well until George Floyd happened. And then it felt like, you can't be talking about finding your inner strength and body positivity when people are burning this country down. So it kind of <laughs> got, it kind of got stalled a little bit. Right. But, but so, um, so, so, so do you feel like, do you, have you get, got any feedback from anybody who read the book and it, did it help them say change their lives and stuff? Oh yeah. 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 I definitely do get, um, I, I want to hear. Yeah, I definitely get uh, emails and DMs and people are telling me that they came across it, they read it, they heard me somewhere and it really helped kind of solidify the way that they were feeling about themselves, which is basically my my whole approach to life now after been been on every single diet and trying to aspire to an unrealistic weight, um, weight goal or beauty goal is to just appreciate who I am and realize that like, I'm okay and no one's perfect. And I think especially during COVID, um, and that's when that's when I, I definitely felt like the momentum was picking up when it was just COVID because people were at home, people were snacking, they were feeling bad, they were trying to lose. And they were like, saying, "Fuck their diets." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I definitely went out and got me a bunch of snacks because it was like I'm gonna be in the house. You know, I'm I'm you know 
hunkering down, not knowing if we was going to really be like stuck in a house. And so I think a lot of people having those moments of being like, oh, here I go. And should I not indulge? And it's like, you got to let yourself live. You got to, you got to let yourself, especially at this point, you have to let yourself grieve the life that you are no longer going to have because there's no going back to normal. This is a whole new experience. And so it is okay to eat a pint of ice cream if you feel sad because, but but Chloe, I'm not not to um, not to uh, well not to like I don't know what what you know I'm, I'm not good with words not to attack you but or attack anything you're doing I I I I, I appreciate your movement but I, I I don't think everybody's thing like with me when I was fat it was not because I was trying to please people or like you know I'm trying you know. I didn't care about myself. I felt actually I didn't care about myself because of, the, of my eating bad and not eating good and taking care of myself. You know, mm-hmm. it's like I always say, it's like we, you know, y- you want people to love you, but then you don't take care of yourself. I'm, you know, what I'm saying I'm not sure that. that no, means- and of course, it, but it's a, it's also it's also like a spiral effect, right? So at some point you're like, I feel good about myself. I feel so good about myself that I'm going to allow myself to eat these things that are bad, but I know I have control over it. And then you lose you? control. No, but that's what I'm saying. You think that, and then you lose control. And then it's like, well, fuck it. Since it's already this bad, I might as well just do continue. whatever I want to. Yeah. Continue. And so the, the biggest thing for me was it, like you said, it's like you, you feel bad for yourself or you start to punish yourself. And that was like, I had to stop punishing myself mentally. And then it made it easier for me to make better decisions because Hold I realized on. that's that just, that's such an easy thing to say. When you say punish yourself, like what is like, what's some of the punishments you did? Like, did you put yourself in timeout? Did you wear a dunce hat? Like what was a, what no, you mean? I mean, it oh. was like, it was like, well, you know, Put like this, if I wanted to go out with my friends and I went to put on an outfit and my jeans are too tight, it was like, fuck it. My jeans are too tight. Nothing fits. I'm going to stay home and I'm as well just eat because I'm already fat. That's punishing Versus, yourself? Yes, absolutely. All right, all right. Versus, cause now, because now... Well, because because now that means I'm not I'm not going out. I'm not being sociable. So I'm not snapping out of whatever melancholy or depression I have, because now I'm just going to be in the house by myself with my thoughts. So that that to me, that's a form of like, that's you're not, I you're guess not we engaging. Had, I, I guess we had two different ideas of what punishing yourself. Daniel Samerson, have yeah. never punished yourself. Every well, day. I'm, I'm actually opposite to her. So now I'm much healthier than when it's not a virus. Because then I try to look like a, a kind of tragic clown. So I don't work <laughs> out and stuff because, uh, you know, to look like a comedian. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I understand one word you just said. Yeah, didn't really make sense to me. <laughs> I, I understood but, everything he said. Yeah, she I, got I it. It words. was pretty Go deep, deep stuff, dude. But uh, <laughs> um, well, I work out more now because one uh, thing is I'm always inside. So I bought one of those bars you hang over your door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those pull-up bars you hang, you, you. Yeah, 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 I have one of those too. I, I, you know, when you first buy things like that, you do them like religiously. Like I was like, every time I go to the bathroom, I'm gonna come on and just do some pull-ups. And then I just, now I just put my head down when I walk by, like I don't see no ball. <laughs> yeah. You know? You never jump up there and have a bit of fun. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know what the fun. I don't know what fun means to you. I, obviously we have different meanings of what punishing yourself and what having fun means. Well, what yeah. is punishing yourself? Is what does that mean for you? Punishing yourself? No, no. When you, when you say punishing yourself, I feel like it means like you're you're putting yourself down and you and you won't go out and enjoy yourself for whatever reason, or, or punishing yourself like you won't enjoy these bad foods. Like I hear people say, when you like can't eat ice cream, oh, I, I'm going to punish myself. It's like I don't look at it eating bad foods as punishing yourself. I mean, not eating bad foods. I look at eating bad foods as punishing yourself. But that's but that's the menta- <laughs> but that's the mentality change. Mm. See, see, the change is it's like when you are, when you love yourself and you have high self esteem, you're not going to do the things. Put it like this: if a man has an exotic car that he loves, that exotic car, he's not going to put shitty gas in that car. But I if do. you have, I would. <laughs> well, then you're gonna be in the mechanic. But, but if you have a shitty car, then you don't give a fuck what what kind of gas or oil you put in it. 
That's right. what I'm saying. Oh, so okay, it's like, okay. so I'm saying like, when you don't feel good about yourself, you tend to so double you say, down. You should, you should value yourself even at, at your worst. So that you don't make, so that you don't make bad decisions right. of being like, well, fuck it. It don't matter. You know what I'm saying? And so when you realize- Is that, that you what do, fuck your die means? So it's like a, a thing on the thing? Well, no, well, it means- It's not really it, fuck your die, but like fuck your die, but- Wait, go ahead. So so it means it means two things. It means fuck the mentality of needing to be on a diet to fit in, right? So fuck fuck yes. um fuck um abstaining from things that are well-rounded, uh, you know, trying to put like you punish yourself by not eating and trying to like I have to do this all water diet like all of those gimmicks like all of those are, like are bad. So fuck all those diets, right? right? And then the other part of it is the more like socio-political stuff that I research, which is fuck your diet in the sense of the foods that we eat in this country go through so much political stuff that we don't even realize. And that means that a lot of the times the things you think you have control over, you really don't have control over. So case in point, and this is why I was doing a lot of talks um, when COVID hit is because African-Americans were disproportionately the victims of COVID. And we kept hearing the term pre-existing conditions. And so when you hear pre-existing conditions, what that really means is that African-Americans in this country tend to eat a certain diet and live in certain communities that have limited resources or limited access to whole healthy foods. Yes. And so when you, and so when you eat bad, you develop medical conditions that are not hereditary, even though we like to think that they're hereditary, they're not hereditary. They are the direct results of bad diet, malnutrition. You could be fat and malnourished. And so that is another concept of fuck your diet, meaning understand that there's a lot that goes into play in what we have access to. And you need to wake up to realize that you have to and, do a little bit more. And Daniel Simonson, just so you know, most most black neighborhoods have, have don't have good quality food, but you could tell white people are moving in when you start seeing fresh vegetables at your local deli or uh, Starbucks or Starbucks. Obviously, yeah. a Starbucks is uh, is a uh, one good example. The whites are coming in. So why why is that though? Why are the whites coming in? Because why, like, why but oh, why does it become more healthy? Because yeah. of racism. Listen, Daniel, everything I've told you this before. I understand. Every, I understand. Uh, before, I, I understand that part, but uh no 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold kind up. Of, what kind that's of for uh, the people, that's for the people yeah. who do not know what you told me before? What did you tell me before, real quick? I told him that when it comes to the disparities in this country, 99.9% .9 of the time, the root cause of it is racism. Yes, I believe the same thing. I know, Daniel, that's not your fight. That's not your story. And you do not understand. But no, but I just mean when uh, white people move in, what kind of changes do they put into action that makes because so, so bro, Okay, can I say yeah. real quick? I think what I think is, and you probably could correct me, and, 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 but I think more black people don't, don't voice out their, 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 vo their anger or the changes to the neighborhood, to to the to the governors, the, the whoever's in charge, because I think no one listened to us, so we stopped complaining. The reason why more white people write to Yelp or write complaints in Amazon because they always had a voice. Where I feel like we never had a voice, or when we try to have a voice, no one listened to us. That's why the whole reason why these marches are happening because we've been talking about the cops whooping our ass for years, and no one ever listened to us. So it's like, what's the point? Uh, that, yeah, you probably could have it, it's that also way. like a society. Uh, it's kind of a thing with society. When I lived in England, it was mostly white people. But even in the poor areas there, it was all junk food like uh, kebab or hamburgers or whatever. And they they were all poor white kids. So I also think it's about poverty. It's not own. I don't know here though, but I, at least no, in, yeah. in Europe, I've seen that where poor white people live that is very unhealthy and like yeah i mean it is it is it is definitely economics um as well but then what happens is when you have urban communities like new york new york city versus say 
other parts of the country where there may be poor white people um, because of racism, those poor white people still have a little bit more access. Their take home income is a little bit higher because of racism, because of uh, the divide when it comes to salary. So, you know, African Americans who are college educated on generally in this country, you, I can have a college degree and with my college degree, I'll still make the same amount as a white person who only has a high school degree. Uh -huh. So, so economically, there's a great divide when it comes to um, your take home money power. And so yes, in white communities where they are poor, they will have fast foods, but they also may have more disposable income, they also have a, a higher um, a higher net value, more money in the bank. They own their property, whereas a black uh, black communities they have lower real estate ownership because of racism, because they don't get mortgages or they get predatory loans where the interest rate is so much higher, or they get denied. So there's a lot of things that like. Sorry, my dog is barking. She doesn't like racism either. Um, there's a lot of things that come into play. Winnie, all right, chill out. Um, and Winnie. so when it the dog is Winnie. Is, Winnie, yeah, her name is like Winnie. Winnie the Pooh? Yeah, Winnie the Pug. Winnie the Pug. Um, I need to show her so Liz can see her because Liz has never seen her. Um, but anyway, so when it comes to those things, um, th those are that's the economic issue, which is still rooted in racism, right? And then yeah. when you talk about like black neighborhoods, the reason why, like Will said, is because they don't care what we think because they've heard it before and they don't see any value in changing it for us. And no. so when white people move in, White people complain, white people uh, join the local council membership board, and yeah. then all of a sudden corporations say, okay, well, this this black neighborhood used to have a median income of $29,000 a year per household, but now white people came in and they're making 80,000. So now that means we have a different demographic, which means that we want these people to buy our groceries. We want them to go to our stores. So let's open up a chain here. Let's make sure that they have access to the stuff because they're gonna flip the community and then the prop the property value will go up. So it's just racism. <laughs> Do you get yeah. it now, Dennis Amerson? Yeah, it's fucked up. I don't um, think he get it. Oh, no, <laughs> no, he I, gets it. No, I understand. But uh, I live in uh, the hood here, so it's not so healthy where I live. Is Daniel is the hood, but it ain't the hood like when I was there. I know it's a different hood. Is you know, the hood that you talking about? You know, maybe like two, three black people. Oh my God, it's the hood. Like where, you, where there, did you uh, Where did you grow up? I grew up in East New York. You know East New York? Yeah, that's pretty hardcore. Brownsville, right? Yeah, but in fact, East New York is uh, is so bad. It's like it still has not been gentrified. Like white people move in and they move right back out. They're like, okay, I've seen enough. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my neighbor is Dominican, but there's nothing healthy around here. Uh, I, I take the train to Trader Joe's. You take uh, the, you have to take the train to go shopping? Yeah. Man, your uh, life is for, tough, dude. For 20, uh, it's okay, man. Oh, uh, that's a cool dog. Oh, look at that dog. Yeah. He that doesn't dog. know. He doesn't know he's being watched. Isn't that so much freedom? No, uh, no. I think she, she. Well, she doesn't know because she can't hear you guys talking. But she can Daniel feel that. Samson, I got news for you. We don't know we're being watched. How about that? I bet if anybody is watching, no one is crushing harder than the pug. <laughs> I, that probably killed that little. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah. <laughs> People are having a good laugh at home. Yeah. So, so, okay, so Chloe, your book is doing good. Well, you don't know, but, but we, we, we're going to I'm sure it. it's, I'm going to say yeah. it's growing. It's growing, good. Um, what's next? Um, well, I'm going to be leaving you guys shortly because I launched during all of this madness of COVID and civil unrest. I launched my own late night talk show entitled oh, shoot. Chloe Across America. That's dope. Oh, wow. What is and it about? It's, um, it is available to watch. It comes on live Monday through Thursday at 10 p.m. It's available on my YouTube channel, no, 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 Chloe Hillier. My, my, my damn Haitian accent. I meant, what, what is it about? <laughs> oh, what okay. is it 
about? Um, so yeah, I do. I do headlines. I, you know, I, I I was a journalist for over ten years before I got into stand-up comedy. So this allows me to merge both both of my worlds. I do headlines. Um, I have guests on. I have different topics. So far, we've discussed what does it mean to defund the police. Um, we uh, talked about intersectionality, black farmers, how to start a business. Uh, oh we man, talked I want to get down on that show. I want to yeah. get down on that show. Oh, it's a really good. Yeah, you got to come on. So that's, yeah, Daniel that's too. My, that's my that's my avenue right there. Yeah. So I mean, for sure, I, I would love to have you to come on and talk about like um, crowdfunding and independent um, independent filmmaking. Yeah, yeah. I well, you know, I ran a film festival for thirteen years. Um, short film festival. The purpose of the festival was to help to get people of color in the industry, and um, it went really well. Yeah. I'm sure they're gonna have to bring that back and 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 more. We are, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, so um, so that's what I've been doing with my free time. You know, it's like evenings are when I feel like comics come alive and and you know you could bullshit during the day because you kind of bullshit during the day when things are open, but at nighttime that's when it really hits you. Like I'm supposed to be doing something right now, right. and so. That yeah. me me working on the t on the on the talk show has really helped my creative energy. And uh, before we started, um, well, Daniel and I were talking about like even doing stand up. And I told him, I was like, I don't really feel like I want to do stand up right now because I don't know what my point of view is. I don't know what I want to talk about, and I don't want to waste waste my not time, but like I don't want to go out and not do something that I feel is constructive. I I feel different about that. I feel like especially us three, we've been doing it long enough. Like when you get on the stage, you'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. It's like when you, it's like when you haven't rode a bike in a long time, you know, you probably start wobbling and then you just get, cause you guys are, you two are great comics. Yeah, you know, um, you I talked know. about so many vast different things. Not like you just talk about one thing. So once you get on that stage a couple of times a week, you know, I'll come back to it and then you, you, you'll have a point of view before you know it. Well, let me ask you this before I go. Are you, when you go on stage, do you do anything old or is it all fresh off the top? Hey, I've been, I've been on stage a couple of times. A, bit, a lot of stuff been fresh off the top, but then, I, you know, like, first of all, I forgot a lot of my jokes. <laughs> but then at, as I'm going, like I did a show a few weeks ago and then I think like 15 or 20 minutes in, the old stuff kicked in. But I was just talking about, you know, wearing a mask and, you know, just topical stuff and, and the new, this new life we're living in. And there's so much material in that. It's like this whole new life that we live in. There's so much jokes in it. And then my old jokes kicked in. So it was like, I don't think it's a problem for us. And plus, there's so much more new experiences we all have, mm -hmm. you know? Daniel, this, this is your first time seeing a Black movement like this, have you? Cause they don't have that in Norway. No, but uh, yeah, that's a good point. As it was very interesting to see it up front. Wait, they, they, no, well, let me. It's such a I'm, sensitive I'm, topic, so. Well, look, I'm being, yeah. I'm joking, but there yeah. are black people in Norway. Is there discrimination in Norway? Oh yeah, in any country it is, man. But I'm talking about uh, among the, like with, with what groups or what group. Um, well, it's a lot of refugee in Norway, so sometimes maybe discrimination towards them, or uh, I would say mostly they are probably. So the refugees that, that's, are what, uh, what race? Uh, kind of from a lot of different countries, like in the 70s, it was probably like South America and, and recently more like uh, the Middle East, you know? Right. So... Uh, yeah, I've maybe seen discrimination that way. Um, I saw it, like I lived in France, I lived in London. I felt I could see it in any society I've been in. Right. So that's, sadly, it's a bit universal. I know. Do you guys think, do you guys see any end to this? Mm. Well, it seems now, in my opinion, that it might be a change for the better this whole virus thing too, because uh, I hope people realize the dangers, for example, now with like for the planet or whatever, 
I mean, this is probably nothing compared to what that could be. And then also seeing everything with Black Lives Matter. It's just like this perfect storm almost. Yeah. So the I interesting agree. thing is if it will continue from now on. That is like, because that's when you really have to be strong, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think it's easy to go on a march, but it's a lot more harder, more respectful to actually work for the movement behind the scenes or whatever. Yeah, I, well, I feel like every, every couple of years, there's something happens where it causes a march. It looked like change about to happen. And then it's like a rubber band. When you stretch it and it goes right back to the way it is. But, but the, the, when, you, when you go back, it doesn't go back all the way. So there's some change, but not, not like the change we, we hoping to see. That makes sense? It's very yeah. slow. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Chloe, you should merge your show with our show. No, I have a really good show tonight. All my guests are going to be there. Oh, oh so wow. this show sucks, huh? <laughs> it's just warming up. We don't get the best stuff. She's just no, uh, I know. This is it. I'm about to change yeah. my clothes and my hair. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so um, we get the we get the sloppy version, huh? Yeah, you get fluffer Clovey. Damn it. <laughs> that still is great though. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Well, I adore both of you, and um, we have to do this another time. Well, thank um, you, Chloe, for joining us tonight. Um, good luck with your show. I wish you major success with your show because your show makes it. That means another black business made it. Not just another black business, but a black woman. Black women, Daniel Simon said, you do not know, are the most underrated, unappreciated, un un underpaid people on the planet and highly disrespected. But people do not know black women also are the... The, the, the na they nature, they, they, they feed the planet, they, they bring a lot of knowledge, like you have no idea, but that truth been buried so long ago, people just yep. do not recognize black people's, black women's value and work. Absolutely, I, just look up, Daniel, look up the, look up the Eve gene. Yeah. Oh yes. I'm yeah. feeling a lot of guilt, so I'm sorry guys. Yeah. No, 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 you're not, you're not, you're what, as they say, you're one of the good ones, so we, uh, <laughs> Now, Chloe, real quick, before you go, why is that cool to say to a white person, but to black people is not, it's not good? Just so that um, you understand. I think because... I, I have an takes, answer, but go ahead. For me, it takes, a, it takes more work to be a good white person than it is to be tolerated by white people being a black person. That's what I think. And also when you are the minority you get to say shit that the majority can't say because it comes from a place of power that we don't have. Mm -hmm. You get that, Daniel? Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you got it, but... <laughs> no, I did, but um, yeah, I, I agree. Because when a white person says that you're one of the good ones, they're saying that you're not threatening. You don't threaten their status as yeah as a as a superior as a superior race. That's a great I mean, way. That to, is, that's a great way to say. It. That's and, a properly racist thing to say, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. Then when a black person say to a white person, "You're you're one of the good ones," we don't mean it in a because because when we say shit, we don't not, not say mean it in a bad way because there's there's no history of us causing oppressing. this oppressing or, or, or using it as to as a as a tool of oppression like the like the n-word or or like you know coon or whatever these were tools to keep us in a place where cracker cracker never you know or not a new one karen oh, oh, don't call me that oh, i couldn't sleep for weeks you call me karen shut up you know what that means yeah. uh karen yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Before we gotta go. I want to respect your time. Bowie. All right. Bye. Wait, what's uh, the name of the show? So the, the name of the show is Chloe Across America. Chloe Across America. And don't forget yes. her book, Fuck Your Dad, on Amazon. Yep. Everywhere. 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 Just, it is, should just log off here and go there. When yep. you go looting, when you go looting, don't lose her book. Don't. Hey, definitely don't. Leave, leave $20, leave $20 behind for my book. All right, love you guys. Bye. Right, thank you. So Daniel, Guess it's just me. you and I. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Um, weird how? Uh, Explain yourself. <laughs> would we do this otherwise or? 
I mean, you and I, well, look, people, people do not know that um, Daniel Sanderson and I, we have performed together on stage together like a duo, and it's pretty damn funny, you know? Yeah, but, I never uh, done that before. Because it's a podcast, we, it's just not straight up stand up. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a different pressure when you're doing stand up versus a podcast. A podcast is more leg room to not be funny. Yeah. Well, you don't have the audience response, so yeah. maybe that it's immediate gravity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, your soul can stay stronger for longer. Stay stronger for longer. <laughs> yeah, dropping some rhymes here in, in Bushwick. Yeah. By the way, if you do not know Dan, you was in a rap group back in Norway, right? Uh, no, I was uh, part of, my friend was the DJ. <laughs> so I would like hang out, uh, you know, so just you a, sit and bounce my head, you know. So you was a DJ groupie? Uh, well, it was my friend. So. Yeah, and you was hanging out with him. So yeah. you was a groupie. If you say so, but I <laughs> agree to disagree. Okay, did you hang out with him when he was not DJing? Uh, yeah, every day. That, and you're super goopy. But he would always stand up and do a few spins. Oh, cool. Just so how's the quarantine going? I think it's okay, man. I go in and out of like some periods are a little bit more heavy and then it's fine again. You know? Wait, 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 hold on, dude. I do not, what do you mean go in, in and out of what? Like what, mentally, physically, what me in and out? Well, there was like a, a week, like, four weeks ago where I could tell everyone around me kind of were like uh, a bit more on edge, you know, they seem more agitated or like it was getting to them. Right. And that kind of went away after a week or so. And then there were. Oh, so you live, are you staying with someone now? I staying with one guy, but I, sometimes I would like bike and then sit on a bench far from each other and meet up with my friend or whatever. Oh, so you, but you live by yourself for the most part. I live with one other person, yeah. Okay, how's that going? It's good. I think we get along really well, so it's good. Yeah, I've been by myself during the entire quarantine. Wow, that must be tough, man. Not really, because I'm a loner. <laughs> oh, okay, you enjoy your company. So it's like, it's like, hey, I'm just being myself. Yeah. It's that saying quarantine, I'm like, just be yourself, Well, Like, all right, I've been doing this for all my life. I've been trying to do that my whole life, too. And, uh, yeah. It's not easy, is it? It's I easy. feel <laughs> Americans are better than that, actually, than most people that I've come across. Like, I think you're pretty good at being yourself in the US. As opposed to what, Norway, you can be yourself? You can. Uh, I think it's more in Europe, maybe. I don't know how to explain it. I think maybe you guys are a little bit more uh, uh, kind of, uh, because of the whole encouragement to claim the spotlight, you're a little bit more uh, used to being big or whatever, if that makes sense. Right, right. Mm. It kind of makes sense, yeah. Um, so you, have you been, you say you've been eating healthy, but have you been cooking your own foods? Yeah. Like what, 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 like what healthy stuff or non-healthy stuff? Yeah, I try to do that, especially now when it's a virus, so that it's maybe less likely that you can pick it up or whatever. But I eat the same things every day, and I, I think that might be bad for you to always eat the same food. What's the what like? What were you eating every day? Like oats every morning. Oats? Yeah. I I think depending on what you're eating, it might not be like if you're eating a bunch of vegetables. Like let's yeah. say you eat like kale, spinach, uh, broccoli, asparagus, cabbage. If you eat that every day, I don't think it'll be bad. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, look at look at a lion. A lion probably eats the same thing every day, right? Probably, you know, like zebra ass, ass, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's that's probably his favorite dish. It's like the little little line cub is like, mommy, we're gonna have today. We'll see, baby. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see who's slow today. <laughs> yeah, whoever is not paying attention. <laughs> um, but do you you eat healthy, right? 
I eat, I eat somewhat healthy. I, but the goal is to eat healthy, healthier every day. I've been cooking a lot. I've been eating um, buckwheat. You know buckwheat? Uh, buckwheat is, 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 is pretty healthy, man. It's really, really healthy. It has more nutrients and vitamins than rice or even quinoa. Um, there's no wheat, even though the wheat is in its name. But it's pretty damn healthy. It's pretty good. I love buckwheat. Yeah, that's... I can't place the name in Norwegian. But uh, my, one of my, there's a rapper called that. He's there's probably, a rapper called Buckwheat? Probably a really healthy guy. Yeah? Yeah. What's your, what's your food of, of what's, the, what's, the, what's the bad foods that you eat? Um, I don't know. I think like Chloe said, I bet they sprayed with all kind of stuff. The yeah, they spray, yeah, they spray these food. It's, food could be perfectly healthy and they'll spray it down, you know, or they'll take away the nutrients. Like, you know, you ever had quinoa? Yeah, of course. The quinoa, I thought it was white, mm -hmm. but real quinoa comes in red or black. So they, it comes in white because they, they, they bleach it. They, and when you bleach it, you remove all the nutrients and vitamins, which I don't understand why they do that to quinoa. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, the, you know, white people try to whitenize the world. I made that word up, whitenize. I like eat more white. Eat. <laughs> yeah. Yes, eat more white. Wow, man. So, so tense days, huh? Yeah. So what else is going on with you, man? Hey, have you did stand up? No, not at all. Um, it would be really weird to do that again now. I kind of talked about thought about what Chloe said, and I hope it's not gonna be like you have to talk about the virus or no. But you could political there's or so whatever. much things to yeah. talk around it because it's part of our lives now. I feel like yeah, I mean it's a big part of it. Yes, a huge part. Like that's why we're doing this. <laughs> I mean, right now it's the main thing. Definitely. Yeah, have you been collecting unemployment? I just got it after like I thought I wouldn't get it because of my visa. So yo, shoot, I just I just found out I'm trying to apply for it now. D -d -d does it pay well? Yeah, it does now, but I, soon it won't. I think in the end of July. I don't know if they're gonna do it yet, but they they're adding six hundred dollars to it. Yeah, so I'm gonna try and get. How long does it take when you apply? How long did it take you to get it? Like three months, man. But it, took it was three months to get it? Yeah, but I'm foreign. What? Because I'm foreign. Oh. So it's much harder. I had to like do a lot of more proof. How, and, how yeah. crazy is that? That you're white and you're foreign. Ain't that crazy? It's like insane. Donald Trump yeah. will have like like he'll love you and hate you at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting. Uh I was scared of actually applying for it because I thought maybe then that would work against me if I wanted to stay here longer. But I had been paying tax here, so you know. You haven't been what? I had paid my taxes here, so I have also contributed to the United States, you know. Right. Yeah. But uh, my best friend, one of my best friends, he had to leave because of his visa. Oh, he got he got booted because of his visa. Yeah. Did he uh, tell it? Did he tell the, uh, customs that he was white? I think it's pretty apparent. <laughs> <laughs> I would be hard to not just spot that, you know. Oh, did he like right, yo? Just I can't do it. I can't do it in front of all these other blacks and and Haitians and and Caribbean people. Meet me in the I, back door. It played a white card. <laughs> yeah. The white card. Um. What do you make of all this then? You think it's gonna be a bigger change this time? Well, first of all, I think Corona's gonna be here for a while. It might be part of our ecosystem, meaning it's, it's hard to get rid of. Mm. You know, even when they come out with a vaccine, um, either two things, they come up with a vaccine that get rid of it completely, it will still go around because the vaccine won't get to anybody. Some people won't take the vaccine. So it's gonna be, it's here to stay. Or you may get companies where they don't want to completely get rid of Corona because they real it's like just like the flu. Yes, it kills people sometimes, but they're making a lot of money with 
you know, over count top medicines and the vaccine. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I mean, what are we gonna do that? We can't like. We're gonna have, we're gonna have two flus in our system now. <laughs> Well, you got the regular flu or Corona? Oh, I just got a little Corona, man. I just got to get this NyQuil Corona uh, nighttime medicine. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, have you been tested? Yeah, I just got tested, actually. And I'm very disappointed. You didn't have it? No, I didn't have it. Um, test came out negative. And then, but that's not the point I'm disappointed about. My antibodies came out negative, and I thought I would at least have some antibodies so I could be a day walker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it sucked on all levels. It sucked because it sucks that I, I never had it. Now I gotta be extra careful. That makes sense? Yeah. It's like it's like it's like when you go to college and you at your last semester, mm -hmm. last semester, and then you graduate, and they say, Daniel, you got a 4.0 GPO, G GPA. GPO, GPA, grade point average. This is your last semester. Can you maintain that 4.0 by, like, ah, damn it. Yeah, you gotta work harder. Yeah, now I gotta like, now I can't, I really can't be hugging and kissing nobody. Not that I did that before, but you know what I'm saying? You can't flip up your phone and text all those, those women. Yeah, that's not my life, but yes, I can. if that was an option, I yeah. won't be able to do that. Yeah, man. Um, so what else you been doing, man? Have you said so you've been you've been doing working out at home? Yeah, I'm so weak, and I, I I grunt when I use it, and sometimes my roommate walk behind me while I'm grunting. Wait, I mean, wait, can you can you grunt for real right now? Let me hear it. Oh, I can't. Uh, it, it, that was pretty. Uh, Yo, yeah, that was. A, <laughs> That was one of the smaller ones. How many pull-ups can you do? Uh, not a lot, man. Like four. That's good. That's good. Yeah, but not in the front, like the strong guys, you know? Back? Yeah, like just here. Or oh, the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I do, I can do eight of these. From the, Be behind behind the neck. you. Yeah, behind the neck. Jesus. That is but the mo the most insane. I ever did in my life was I did 21 pull-ups, the most I did in my life. But that wow. was like in front. That was, like two, or... that was 2000, 2011 or 2012. So it must have made a big impact on you since you remember the year. Or... No, because that's that was the time I had changed my life. I lost a lot of weight. Lost, you know, I just started boxing a lot. And I remember we was in the street, me. Godfrey, Kevin Hart. And I just remembered we was talking so much shit. And then we were talking about pull-ups and we went to the street, you know, the the, the street sign, the, the do walk, don't walk sign. Mm -hmm. So I jumped up there and I just grabbed, I just and I just started doing pull-ups. But that is what I mean also with Americans. Like I've seen people do that. And that's something you wouldn't see so much in Europe. Uh, People doing pull-ups pull on, on, <laughs> on like a construction pole, you know? They sometimes yeah. do it al alone too. That is weird to me. When you do it alone, I can see it doing with a few friends, but it's just what? you, you just walk by it and jump up there, you know? Well, well I mean, I live alone, I do it. Why is that yeah. weird? It, it's kind of weird when you do it in public, in the street, in something that's not supposed to be like in the subway, when they grab the pulse there and they start doing yeah. it. Were, were you born Catholic? Were you, were you, were you, your religion is Catholic? Uh, yeah, or atheist. Yeah, but Catholic first, right? I mean, it's not so religious in Norway. Um, okay, because I feel like, Cat I was born Catholic. I feel like Catholic, they make you, they, they, make, you feel, they make you feel guilty about, or make you, I, I was living my life based on all other people's thoughts mm. constantly. So I was like, oh no, what, what are people gonna think about me? How are they gonna feel about me? So I just, I'm like, I stopped caring about what people think about me because their thoughts won't pay my rent, won't mm. help me feel better, won't take me to the hospital when I'm sick. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's great, man. I really respect that. 
Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's still a work in progress. Sometimes, you, you know, I care a little bit, but, but you know, like think about like when you do something, right? Let's say you trip and fall. Yeah. First thing we get, we get embarrassed, right? You get embarrassed, like, oh, what people think. Mm. But if, like within two, three minutes, no one cares. No one cares. Yeah, I doubt they remember it a few weeks later. No. <laughs> in, in case, maybe it was if very... It, yeah. If they remember it, they're a loser. So your life sucks that much that you have to remember this thing about me. So yeah, that means... That's your I'm best your story. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I used to slip. Actually, in Norway, I slipped a few times. There was a lot of snow there. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's more but, rich. But not just, yeah, but slipping is like, but I'm talking about like buying expensive clothes to impress people. You know, uh, and yeah. people say that bullshit. Oh, I buy it for me. Just make me feel good. No, shut up. You buy it because you want to show off that you, you think you're better than other people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Do you ever, you ever wear clothes to impress people? Um, yeah, definitely in the past, for sure. It wasn't even to impress people. It was to be part of the gang. So oh, kind of- Oh, wearing a, a uniform, a gang uniform. Yeah, yeah, like dress how your friends did, you know, and be stylish. So not a gang, more like you was influenced by your friends. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, influenced yeah. by people I see on TV or whatever. Right. I think I, even yeah. uh, I, I always dressed after how others dress. Yeah, I remember I used to like my, my parents would never buy me the the, the you know the expensive sneakers. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So one time, you know, my my dad would take us to the store. There's a there was a big box in the middle store with all the cheap sneakers, right? And so me and my brother would run to the wall with the expensive sneakers. And my dad be like, wait, everybody, come here. What are, you, what are you doing? No, 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 not that. Put that back. Come here. Pick something here. And we just we just hold up sneakers like, ah, oh, this sucks, that sucks, this sucks. I was fortunate I found a pair of Adidas, right? It was like I held it up and it, it glowed. Mm -hmm. and, and I heard, like, heard music like, whoa. I was like, and my almost like a tear came down my eye, like, oh shoot, Adidas, and it's only $9.99. Right? Wow. I put them on. Now at the time I wore a size eight. I was in seventh grade, size seven, a seven or eight. I put them on. They were get to a size they were. Size five. They were size five. Oh yeah. I put them on and my dad so go, how is it? It looks small. How is it? And I go, I look at my dad right in his face. Dad, they're fine. They're <laughs> great. You were willing to suffer because they were so fresh. Oh, dude, they, I wanted to cry. A tear came down my eye from the pain. My toes was in there like, like, you know what I'm saying? You know that snake, when you open that bottle, a snake comes out yeah. and you got to put it back in the bottle. That's what my toes was like. That snake, like, as soon as it, like, and then, and then after maybe a couple of days, you know the, the, the front of your sneaker? You could see my, all my toe imprints on the outside, like squeezing, like. Speaking outside. Yeah. I mean. But, I, dude, but you know what? I had a pair of Adidas and no one bullied me for 19 months. Because of your shoes. Wow. Is it that much respect to have Adidas? I don't know, but I never had expensive shoes and they thought they were expensive. Mm -hmm. Now they were like $9.99 or $8.99, but all my friends are like, yo, how much are those? I don't know, dude, maybe like two, $300. I don't know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Money's yeah. no object. We don't worry about money. We just pay for shit. <laughs> Talking a big one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I mean, I think shoes are better if they're too tight in the beginning. I always buy one size too small. Why? And then, because if, if they're perfect in the beginning, they're too big eventually, you know, and they slip on your foot. Yeah, well, you know what? What I didn't tell you was, after wearing those shoes that was three, four sizes too small for my feet, 
I pay the price later in life because my toes, you know, when you're standing this way and your feet are standing this way, but my toes are standing this way. So you look at my feet, you know, which way I was ready to go. Like, where, where are you making left or right? No, no, I'm, I'm going straight. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they were always trying to find some space on the side. Or space in the side, space in the, whatever. Mm. Ah, that's a good story, man. Huh? That's a cool story. Thank you. <laughs> well, look, I think they, uh, we're about to wrap up. Ah, that's cool. Nice way to end it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You got to say what you're working on. What you got going on? I'm doing an acting class on Zoom. Uh, you you teaching or you taking? Taking one. You ta and how much it cost? I should join you. Uh, yeah, it's actually they went down in the price. So it's like 200 something dollars. For how long? For quite a few weeks. I think it's like six or seven weeks and two two hundred dollars for six seven weeks mm. it's actually i, I could actually movies, yeah. yeah his name is jim brills is it good so, you learn anything yeah he's pretty good so, yeah you learn anything yeah it's very let's see a scene. hard though let's see a scene <laughs> uh that's uh, uh that would be painful why is it painful you've been doing it you paid all this money you better get your money's worth. Yeah, I don't. I like to keep some stuff hidden, you know, and pull it out in the right moment. All right. What's the show? What's the social media? Uh, of him? No, you you oh. shot you out. Oh, mine. Uh, Daniel Simonson comic on Instagram. Spell it out. Uh, uh that's so long, man. <laughs> There's so many letters. Daniel Simonson comic. Maybe you should get D S C at you know Daniel Simonson comic. D S C or D S comic. It's probably true. They probably give up before they get to the end. But you should do why, why about just Daniel Simonson? Why comic? Um that's a good question, man. I haven't even taught it. Oh, there you go right there. Daniel Simonson comic. Yeah. Did you find me? Yeah. You should follow and, um, me, man. Well, I'm working on my film. And like, so like, my. I am a, Maurice. I have that T-shirt here in my closet. Thank I you, man. Thank you. You should have wore that instead of Nike. I one, know. Man. I Black thought about it. Black businesses, man. Black businesses. I know. So sorry, man. Black lives matter. Black movies matter. <laughs> fuck. I, I always yeah. fuck up. But I'm wearing. I'm, I'm still raising money. If you guys want to help us raise the money to make this movie happen. Is about a Haitian boxer that comes to New York to pursue his love for boxing. Go to GoFundMe.com slash I am Maurice. Mike, can you pull it up? GoFundMe.com slash I am Maurice on GoFundMe. And um, and then Will Silvins, W-I-L-S-Y-L-V-I-N-C -I -I at, at anything. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you want. You had your phone name. Yeah, Will Silvins. I just go by Will Silvins, man. Yeah. Uh, oh shit! Hold on. There we go. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Oh, that's, wow. that's the go for me. Now, oh, thank you, Corey Kelman, and Luis Yen and Caroline Guzinski, who donated. Wow, you raised a lot. Four four thousand. That's a lot. Well, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's better than nothing. How long has it been up there? Um, about a year now. I think I can't remember. But but yeah, we hope to raise the full money. The goal is to raise eight hundred thousand dollars, then we we go into production. I think you can do it for sure. Yeah, we're gonna do it, man. Well, Daniel, man, I'm gonna see you, man. Let's keep in touch on the phone, man. We could talk some ideas and stuff. Yeah, for sure, man. All right, Just everybody, call me whenever. I'm I'm gonna call you tonight. Everybody, be safe, man. Uh, Will Silvins, Dan Summerson, Chloe Hillard, Safi Sanson wasn't here. Um, I'll see you guys later, man. Take care.